So this piece right here in Politico honestly just confused me. That's the emotion that I felt as I went through this here. So they say, Dems launch a new effort to shore up white voters by leaning into race. The White Stripe Project is taking a more data-driven approach to recapturing a block that has been lost to Democrats for years. Here's why I say this is confusing. And we'll go through some of it and you'll see what I mean. But like when they say they're going to try to get white voters by leaning into race, are they saying get white voters by leaning into like minority identity politics? By bringing up like, you know, hey, we have to treat racism issues very seriously and you're here to help us lead the charge on that or is it like talk about race in the sense that you talk about white people issues what exactly are you doing here <laughs> okay let's let's read and see if we can uh, figure it out a new democratic aligned initiative dubbed the white stripe project has a novel idea for winning white working class voters back to the democratic party lean more into talk of equity and race Organizers say traditional methods in wooing white voters are ineffective, often relying on knee-jerk recommendations from an elite group of Democrats that pushes a race-neutral economic message. White Stripe organizers say this approach is misguided. They are calling for a more targeted and data-driven approach that they argue will be a better return on investment. First of all, let's just say, these like, these like data people trying to do politics stuff, that really annoys me. Because the whole point of politics is supposed to be policy. What policies do we implement to make everybody's life better, right? Like, what laws are we going to pass to make everybody's life better? And, like, in order to do that, you need to start with a core message, with a moral and ethical vision, with actually believing in something. And these people are like, no, let's just go by, quote-unquote, the data. Well, what, what does that even mean? Like, what does that mean? We're going to go by the data, but, like, how do you even break that down? Like, we just poll individuals and see what they say and try to take the average of what they're like i don't even know what that means and by the way i would argue to go by polls makes sense in a democracy right you're supposed to do the will of the people and if something's overwhelmingly polling positively that's probably a good thing but if you do that where do you end up you end up with the basics you end up with hey higher wages you end up with hey give people health care right and they're acting like no if you do data stuff what you'll realize is actually uh white voters want to talk about race all the time where are you getting that from? What data are you talking about? The project has plans to build a robust infrastructure to attract white voters who are open to democratic messaging, but who are less likely to vote. Once identified, organizers are betting with targeted messaging and pinpoint engagement that enough of these voters will show up for the party at the ballot box. White voters have disproportionate political power. Aaron Heaney, executive director of Showing Up for Racial Justice, told organizers during the Monday afternoon launch of the project, we need a strategy for engaging and organizing them alongside communities of color. While President Joe Biden's performance among white voters in 2020 improved over Hillary Clinton's in 2016, Republicans still dominated this segment of the electorate. According to Pew Research Center, Biden carried 33% of this block, while then-President Donald Trump carried 65%. The caveat, according to Pew, was that the vote total Trump carried with non-college-educated white people was nearly identical to what he pulled in 2016. The White Stripe Project believes these voters are gettable. Quote, we need to have a public, non-defensive, data-driven conversation, said Steve Phillips, a Democratic political analyst and author who serves as president of the Sandler Phillips Center, which studies voting demographics. It's one of the progressive groups that formed the project. One group that may not buy the message is Democratic donors. Phillips says, far too often, Democrats and deep-pocketed donors settle on narratives about past elections that then inform future contests with little empirical data. As an example, he said, he has heard rumblings from those in the party that Stacey Abrams' two-time loss in Georgia's gubernatorial content is proof that race and equity issues do not fare well in close elections. Phillips doesn't believe that race-centered issues should be abandoned in favor of a more race-neutral economic message. He's quick, he is quick to point to another Democratic loss in Ohio last cycle. We also don't talk about Tim Ryan in Ohio, who really did manifest this playbook about downplaying race and leaning into economic issues, and he lost badly, Phillips said. So what do we make of that? Yeah, but then you have Sherrod Brown, who did the same thing as Tim Ryan, except he won, and he won in an overwhelmingly red state. Like, you could do data points in every which direction. The question is, what do you actually believe in, and what are you actually going to fight for? And that's what you run on, right? But race as a wedge issue can't be ignored, says the White Stripe organizers. Instead, it should be tackled head-on as Republicans embrace culture war issues like critical race theory and battling the so-called woke agenda. Yeah, but here's the thing. When Republicans lean into culture war issues, they don't do well. DeSantis is all culture, culture war all the time. He plummeted in the polls. In the last election, they ran on election denialism, anti-abortion stuff, anti-trans stuff, crime stuff, and they did terribly. So you look at them doing culture war stuff, and you're like, let's do the mirror image culture war stuff. That doesn't seem like a great idea. Now, let me be clear. I'm a believer in if you have these targeted communities, minority communities, that the Republicans are on a crusade against them. Of course you have to defend those communities. Of course. 
So there's like at least five or six states that have passed anti-trans legislation that even impacts trans adults and they can't get the care they need up to age 26. Defend the communities that need to be defended. As a matter of principle, you do that, of course. But also, let's not pretend like you can afford to never talk about higher wages, to never talk about unions, to never talk about universal health care, to never talk about improving people's lives materially. Of course you need to focus on economics. Of course you need to focus on universalism. Of course you, this is obvious. But they're saying, no, don't do that. Let's just do, let's just focus, equally focus as much on the culture war as Republicans. That seems to be the message. We know that race is an incredibly powerful tool to keep people, white people, silent and separated from the multiracial coalitions we need to win, said Heaney, who leads one of the principal groups spearheading the project. As Biden begins to form the contours of his reelection campaign, it is clear economic issues will be at the forefront. To drive home this point, during the last month, Biden had traveled South Carolina, as state Democrats have little chance of flipping in 2024 to tout his message of innovation and investment and in how these are paying dividends in red-leaning districts. He's also planning to visit the North Georgia District Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, one of his biggest Republican detractors to attend groundbreaking of a solar facility. Quote, Joe Biden is going to go into areas that may not have been available to us before, said Simon Rosenberg, a longtime Democratic strategist who was involved in the White Stripe Project. Politically, that is very smart, and I think will be successful for him in 2024. What successful mean? If it's one or two percentage points nationally, we know that can be the difference in winning and losing the election. Yeah, but okay, but that's not him going there to talk race, right? That's him going there to say, hey, I got you jobs. If Democrats end up winning in 2024, if they end up doing well, as there's some evidence to say they will based on the special election numbers to this point, Democrats are overperforming by 10 percentage points. Okay. Here's why that would be the case. Number one, Trump is so goddamn extreme and such an obvious criminal that normies and moderates and independents are scared to death and they're running in the direction of anybody but Trump, right? So that would be one reason why and probably the biggest reason. And then the other thing is this. South Mountain West see manufacturing boom under Biden. Change in U.S. manufacturing jobs. So, <coughs> excuse me, there's been a net increase of like 800,000 manufacturing jobs under Biden. And you can see here the states that are getting, you know, the, the best result. So the dark purple is plus 10% or more in jobs. The light purple is plus 5% or more. The lighter purple is between 0 and 5% more in jobs. So it's still a net job gain, manufacturing jobs. And then under that, the, the like yellowy orange, like that, those colors are net loss. You only have a net loss in literally two states in the country. Everywhere else, you're seeing a manufacturing job boom. If Biden wins, it will be because of stuff like this. And it will be because Trump is viewed as so insane, every normie runs away from it at, at a thousand miles an hour. To say, hey, let's just talk to white people about race a lot more. Well, look, I hate to tell you, but if you're somebody, working class white person, you make... 30 grand a year, 40 grand a year, trying to raise your family on that. Um, if you're not talking kitchen table issues, they're not listening. They want to know, how am I going to pay the bills? That's what they want to know. They want to know, how can, you know, I'm afraid I'm going to go bankrupt for medical bills. How, how are you going to fix that? This is the stuff people are concerned about. It's not some esoteric, theoretical conversation about the nature of whiteness or whatever. And I, again, I don't even know if they're saying talk about race in the sense that you talk whiteness with white people or talk about it in the sense that you talk about like, uh, you know, minority identity politics vis-a-vis -vis white people. I don't know. I don't know. But either way, it seems very weird and the exact kind of weird stuff you'd see from like data-driven nerds who have no core. Politics is about policy. What, what do you value? What are your morals? How do you improve the world? Right? Like that's what it's about. And to just, like, crunch some numbers and take away all moral content is not a long-term winning strategy. And uh, I would say they should have learned this lesson by now, but we're talking about Democratic strategists and they never learn anything. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.